back guys so today I'm gonna to replace the brake assembly the entire brake assembly on my 1983 coachman travel trailer why you should watch my video as well as some others is I've never done this process before I really don't know much about electronic brakes uh, or brakes in general so I'm the guy I'm you if you're checking out YouTube videos to figure this out I've never done it I've watched a bunch of videos I spent probably three hours watching YouTube videos learning from some other guys and decided I think I can handle that so you can watch my video to see how just another average Joe, you know, dummy gets it done. See if I do it, can you do it? Garbage man's coming through. So I've never done this process before. It's a good, you know, comparison. If you've never done it, you're trying to figure out if you can. Well, let's see how I do. And I don't. Uh, I'm just an average guy who has watched some other videos and replicating it. So that might be a good reference point for you. Now this is my last one. I've done the other three. So I, that's why I look like a wreck. I don't look like the typical YouTube guy in a nice, you know, clean uh, um, workshop with his nice polo on or whatever doing this process. I'm a wreck because I've already done three of these. One of them this morning, the other two were yesterday. So anyways, whatever, enough talking, let's get right in. So of course, first we gotta get our tire off. I have loosened these lug nuts already. This was a first for me. They're not lug nuts, they're like lug bolts. Um, I don't know if that's the name for them or not. I don't know if these are normal or if it's an older camper thing or an older trailer thing, but uh, first time I've had them. I definitely prefer lug nuts because you got the bolt you can put your, your wheel on, your tire on, when you're putting it back on. I feel like this is a little more difficult because I got to kind of hold it up with my legs and and then put one in and get it on there. You know what I mean? There's nothing to, I mean, you can set it up on the spindle, but. I'd like to also point out that when you jack up your car, it's got four tires on four corners and this trailer is not the same. There's nothing in the back. There's the jack stand in the front. There's the two sets of tires in the middle. So I was pretty nervous about that. Um, not only do I have my jack on here and it's tight, but it's it's been brought down so that everything's resting on a jack stand. It's a six ton jack stand. So it's definitely got the girth and the ability to hold on there. Anyways, let's move on. So this is a dust cover. They're not very expensive. I ordered to cut some new ones off Amazon. For me, I've seen other guys like sit, put a screwdriver in there and pry and stuff. What I've been doing on this process is just using this three pound hammer of course, this one seems like the one that's like the got a really tight seal in there. There we go. Now I'm just tapping it. And it's working its way out. All right, that's trash. Okay, so now we got to get this castle nut off here in the middle. It is held on with a cotter pin. Don't reuse these cotter pins. Just, uh, you know, you're gonna bend it, then rebend it. Just get some new ones, they're cheap. Um, we noticed this grease is still red or purple or however, color, whatever color you wanna call it. From the research I've been doing, I'm no expert. I was Googling a lot with the greases. The color doesn't necessarily constitute the type of grease it is or anything. They just dye it. But uh, one thing I read was one of the one of the things you can notice from the grease is that it's gonna the dye is gonna be the first thing to burn up or whatever you want to call it get used up. So me seeing this and it's still being red tells me that you know. And I know that the previous owner didn't use this camper a lot. I've used it twice. I don't think these brakes. I don't think these wheels have been used a ton. I probably didn't have to replace them, but that's okay. And the grease may have been okay since it still died, but that's okay. Ah. So this just now speaks to one of the biggest issues I've discovered, keeping everything clean. Not been easy for me. A shop would be great for this because just the dirt on the ground, the grass on the ground, everything's been getting pretty, I've had a hard time because you want to keep that clean inside there. This is the castle nut. 
pretty easy to remember because it kind of looks like a castle. It's one of the few parts I actually know the name of. It's also supposed to be hand tightened on. So I used those pliers to get a good grip on it and get started, but uh, it wasn't that hard. From there, now this hub can work its way off the spindle. There's a washer, so it goes castle nut, washer. Oh, that's really dirty gre uh, grease in there. So maybe this did definitely need cleaned out. And then there's two bearings to this. The smaller one is on this side. Man, none of the others look like this. I'm not even sure if that's grease or mud. This thing might have been packed in with mud. I stand corrected. This may have really needed cleaned out. Anyways, the larger inner bearing is inside this hub. The outer one comes off as soon as you remove that castle nut in the washer if you want. This one's got this grease seal. Every video I watched, the guys said, you're not gonna save the grease seal. They don't come when you order a new assembly, so you gotta order that separately. They're also not expensive. They're like less than $10. This tool, this pry tool I have, is what I've used. Every single one of them has come popped off, come flying off. So watch your face if you use something like this. Obviously it's packed in there. It's got a nice tight seal because it's had grease in it and everything. I'm just trying to be careful not to scratch up the inner part of this. It's taken me a few minutes for every one of them, but I've gotten it. And that's partially why I just keep spinning it and small steps. Like I don't want to torque on it too much and break anything. This looks filthy in here. This one did need it. It's probably needed it the worst, the way this looks. That or they didn't change out the grease and clean it out well enough. The old grease, whoever did this last. See, four for four, it went flying out just like that, each one of them. So watch your face. That is filthy. I started putting everything in a box, I just found it because it's hard to keep clean otherwise, so I got a cardboard box. So that's a little tip for you, maybe. Now I need to clean all that up. But first, that's the assembly. It's been on there for who knows how long. There are four bolts in the back. There's a tab, there's one tab, two tabs. So it's just a plate with four bolts in the back. So what I've started doing, because the very first one I did of this, which I didn't know the process, and I was struggling through it, First one, I had a bolt that took me forever to get off, and I ended up stripping the heck out of it and breaking it. Um, so what I've been doing from now is using some PB Blaster to loosen them up, and then I'll clean all these parts. So I'm gonna do that real quick. You're gonna use a lot of paper towels too. Of course, watch your eyes, watch your face, wear PPE, wear eyeglasses, don't be like me. Next up, guys. I'm gonna clean those parts with paper towels. You're gonna use a ton of paper towels. You're gonna at least, at least a roll, if not a couple rolls on this. So I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. There's nothing to that. I'm gonna wipe all these parts off and then we'll okay, check them so out. I, okay, so I cleaned all those parts that came out. Just cleaned them with paper towels, like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, I also cleaned off the spindle. And all the other guys I was watching, they talked about look at your bearings, check for discoloration. That could show they've been overheated and whatnot and uh, they might be bad. I haven't seen any discoloration. They look pretty good to me. Another thing I've been doing is, uh, I don't know if that's picking up on camera or not, but I'm getting my fingers on the inside and it spins really well in there still. So that, you know, for me, my uneducated opinion, that seems like it's in pretty good shape still. Um, there is a lot of the grease still in there, the old grease. When we repack this in a few minutes, you'll see that we'll push that old grease out. So I'm not worried about that yet. Now I'm ready to go ahead and get this off. Um, I'm gonna use my wire cutters and just cut the the wires. These are magnetic brakes, so they're just electric wires. They're not like hydraulic brake lines or anything like that. I'm gonna cut off as little as possible to try to preserve what I got in there because I found uh, on one of them it got pretty tight and I didn't have a lot of space to work with. So I'm gonna cut that straight forward. All right, those are cut free. I have a breaker bar. Here's my crescent wrench. I'm using a half inch socket because obviously these are pretty torqued and it, uh, I don't want to tear up my tools. So I'm using my heavier duty stuff. This breaker bar is hard to get in there, but it's worth it. After that first time around, I'm just getting it on situated and at least trying to break them free with it. Uh, 
I'm not even really trying with this anymore to start. Once I get them loose, then I finish off with this. So that's just me working around the angles with this thing is tricky at times. I think the front brakes are a little, or the front wheels are a little easier than the back ones because of the uh, shroud, whatever that's called. Uh, that kind of gets in the way on the back side. I feel like I feel like I have a little more room to work here. And that one just there broke free. If you saw, that was about as easy as it's been for me. That was about the easiest one. I think the PV blaster, and I think just starting with this breaker bar has helped me out. This is why I did three of them before getting on video with you guys. So you didn't have to see me spend, I think the first one on one of those bolts, one of those nuts, I spent like an hour alone fighting it and fighting it. So uh, just some experience, uh, experience as in like the last two days of working with this. It really starts to get better. I feel like. Now, was it enough? Were they free enough? We're about to find out. Yes, that was the one I was most worried about. So, I think we're in good shape. I can tell you guys, the nut, that my old ones and my new ones are on. I, I do have to use a couple of old nuts again because uh, I couldn't find enough new ones around town. I probably could have ordered them off Amazon, but I didn't even know what size they were exactly. And it was surprisingly difficult to find. So I got grayed because, okay, you probably want to replace the nuts as best you, as many as you can because they've been on there for years. They're old. They could be fatigued. So my new brake assemblies did not come with new nuts. So what I ended up finding an Ace Hardware, and it was not a small feat because a lot of people did not have them, are grade eight nuts, because that's the strength you want for automotive stuff, so I'm told. And the size was 7 sixteenths dash 20. So there you go. Grade eight, 7 sixteenths dash 20 nuts. I felt like they were not very easy to find. I did get... 14 of them. I wanted 16. Good enough. This is going to be one I have to use the socket wrench all the way off. I can't unhand finger tighten it off, loosen it. I should also point out there is a difference in these brake assemblies, left and right side. They should be pretty clearly marked. Mine were. So make sure you're using the left side and the right side. I never pointed out to you, the experts have shown all this too. By the way, Magnet, okay, electrodes go through, whatever, electromagnetic, burp. Magnet locks on, it catches the outside, and it pulls, and then that pulls this brake pad around the outside hub. That's how these work, technically. Why am I replacing mine? I mean, they look okay, they don't look great. One, you're supposed to um, readjust these, like every year, I think it is. There's this little plug in the back and you would pull it out and use a screwdriver or a tool and kind of torque it down um, the ones I bought they were only like $20 more I got self adjusting so I won't have to mess with that Two, if you follow my channel you know I've been having uh, brake issues electrical brake issues I may have already solved it I found a wiring problem previously with my uh, emergency uh, release pin I fixed that problem but uh, basically, I'm getting a short when I drive and tow this and another common reason can be a uh, You know an issue with the wiring to the magnet and the brakes. So I just decided you know what? I mean, he's probably been on here forever. I started watching the videos. I'm like, I'm just gonna be better safe than sorry I'm gonna completely replace them. So enough about that Ugh, Get that out of here Woo. All right guys, this mess is also part of why I'm doing this. I'm wondering if the wiring is what's caused my short uh, back here. Uh, I'm very nervous for what I'm going to have to do. So, these thicker wires here, these are emergency uh, uh, pull-away pin brakes uh, wires. These two that come from inside the axle are actually the wires that are um, uh, wired to the camper. And to tell you the truth, I have no idea where they got into the axle because I don't see them going into the axle anywhere. It's really confusing to me. If none of this works, I think I'm going to have to do some more research on how uh, emergency pins are set up and wired. 
find out if the previous owner did it right and everything. But uh, basically, I need to get one wire for each. It doesn't matter which is which because we just need a current. So I need one of these wires that come from inside the axle, so the black and the red, connected to one of the wires on the brake, and then also connected to one of the two thicker wires here, which you see this was run, it was continued on. They used the, I already took this one off because I was trying to figure it all out. They used these like coupling things. I don't like them, I feel like they're gonna fail you. Um, I'm about to cut this wire, but it continues to go to the back brakes, so I'm very, very unsettled about that, but you know, what are you gonna do? Gotta live our life one quarter mile at a time, right? Or something like that. Uh, if I screw it up, it's already screwed up. It was screwed up the moment I started this. Um, if I screw it up more, then I'm just gonna have to buy some wiring because that's the thing. Like my only other options I thought about doing right now require more wire and I have no wire. I don't have electrical wire. I don't ever do electrical wire stuff. So I'm gonna continue using these. I like these. Uh, the solder, I, it's it's pretty evident. It only solders around the outside edge. It doesn't really get through and mingle in the wires. Um, we get a nice seal, it seems like. Um, I'm about to cut this wire, which is what makes me very nervous. And we're gonna connect everything. All right, check this out. I'm thinking on the fly. This whole thing is a, a zoo, but you'll see where I'm going with this here in a moment. <clears throat> I'm only do one of these at a time to see if we get to work. First thing is first. I'm going to use one. Sorry. I. It's not a joint, but I'm going to seal that up where it was connected before. Right now, this part's just so I can have more slack. My cut's down here, up here. I'm using my self-soldering marine grade butt connections to repair a damage in the line. And then that line, I'm taking and connecting it with the brake itself, as well as the tow vehicle wiring. So there are four lines all connected together with a larger one of those uh, marine grade self-soldering butt connections. Now, I don't believe that portion of that wire should cause us any more problems. Should be waterproof, should be protected. Now, let's cut this back some. I'm not sure about this. One thing to remember is it is just current. At the end of the day, we just gotta get this to conduct to each of these. And if they're touching, they're conducting. Maybe I should have tried to slide this one over the other. I believe everything, all four wires are in there. Don't do this at home. When you get to this part, watch somebody else's video on electrical work. That's my advice to you. I joke, but my honest thought is that I believe this is gonna work. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to come back in here and take the tire off and do this again. But uh, for now, this is what I'm gonna try to do. This is the equipment I have with me today. And I think it's going to work because, like I said, at the end of the day, we just got to get all these wires connected, I believe, right? It does not take very long with these either. So, guys, that was a cluster. That's one of them. I am going to wrap this in electrical tape from all the way from here all the way down to here. So, I'm going to wrap it up really, really good. I'm going to do the same exact thing with this other one. So, you've seen me do it once. I know it took a lot of time. I'm not going to show you the second time. So that's how I'm going to connect my wires and we'll find out in the end if it works. All right. All right, guys, I got the electrical wiring. Uh, I feel like it's pretty good. That electrical tape looks like crud. Uh, that's like I said, that Harbor Freight stuff's terrible. I'm never buying it again in my life. So now we're actually going to put everything back together. It's downhill from here. So this right here is anti-seize lubricant. I'm putting these on the bolts. Um, it was explained to me, it was suggested I do this for my friend. And then it was explained that this will keep my nuts from um, uh, rusting and whatnot. It'll just create a layer, layer between two. It's not going to make them loose or anything like that. I am putting locking washers on there. Um, so yeah, 
that's that. Here's my hardware. Like I said, I do have to use one of the old ones. Unfortunately, bummer. Other than that, I got all new ones. Be careful not to mess up my electrical wiring I just did. And slide that on carefully. All right, this is self-explanatory. Four bolts on the back. I put that anti-seize on there. I put the lock washer on. And then the nut. I'm just hand tightening it right now to get them on there. So that they stay and I don't have to hold it in place. That first one's kind of the most difficult. I gotta use this one old one. Like I said, that stinks, but oh well. It is what it is. All right guys, so I went ahead and bought a grease gun for two reasons. One, I think it's gonna be easier for me packing these bearings. Rather than using put the uh, tub of grease and pushing it through manually, I'm gonna put my bearing in here. I got my uh, grease gun attachment. This tool was like $8. You attach that on, put the bearing in between the two, screw it together. Of course, now's the part where I get grease everywhere. Tighten that down and then just start pumping it. It's gonna pump the old grease straight out the bottom. You'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. It's gonna pack it. So this is all I'm doing. I'm looking. Can you see in between there? I hope you can. And you see black, you see the black grease. So I'm pushing the black out. couple more squeezes I start to see the green grease that means I've pushed out all the black and I've packed in green so of course I need to get grease on this spindle now I kept hearing of another mechanic talk about contamination contamination don't contaminate it and I'm like and he said even green like I get sticks leaves I get why that would contaminate this bearing uh, dirt it bind up the the bearings you know and not be good for it I mean you know what I mean it could stop being able to spin it could stick it whatever I'm stumbling over my words but you understand what I'm saying but he's talking about getting rid of the old grease and I'm like how could grease contaminate grease well through Google and Google and Google I'm learning that different brands even if it's the same color different brands of this stuff have different compounds I don't understand so I talked about this being like the the novices version of doing this the dummy version so I'm not the real mechanic. Why in the heck isn't there like a uniform? Like there's like five different kinds of wheel bearing grease with different compounds and stuff. There's Molly, there's synthetic, there's all this other crap. I'm like, why is this so complicated? Why didn't you guys just make this like, this is what you use and it's all the same. It's not all the same. Like why do I have to worry about getting rid of every little bit of old grease so that I never got to my point. I started rambling. Um, different compounds different chemicals in it one grease could react with another grease make it harden one can make it watery you know your grease compound can change so the internet says so that's what I've learned so I'm getting this good and greased up uh, the other reason I got a grease gun I was talking about mine's an old camper I saw this hole in the middle unfortunately so a lot of the newer ones, you can hook your grease gun up to that. It squirts it down and through the spindle and there's a hole in there. So then you're, once you put everything together, you're pumping it in and you can spin your wheel and fill that whole void, that whole cavity with grease. Mine's an 83. I saw this hole, I thought I had that. I don't have that. That's not a thing for me. So I put as much, either way, you're gonna put as much grease as you can on that spindle. <clears throat> then hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. I need to make sure the inside of this drum's cleaned out. I've got greasy hands, so I'm gonna use a paper towel and wipe everything again. But I'm gonna put that bearing I just did in there. First, I'm gonna put a bunch of grease. 
Ideally, my understanding is you want as much grease inside this area, this void, this centerpiece as possible in the end. If it's completely 100% full of grease, you're not getting water or dirt or anything in there, and it's gonna hold up a lot better. It makes logical sense to me. Uh, the grease gun, typically you wouldn't keep this cone on, but for what I'm doing right now, and I gotta pack another bearing in a minute, I've just been leaving it on until after the second bearing. That's just me, not the expert. All right, so I got a bunch of grease in there. Here's my bearing. It's greased up pretty good. Drop it down in. The thin part goes towards the center. The wider, since it's like a cone, comes outward, well, towards the inside of it, but outward to me where I'm looking right now. So there's that. Got a bunch of grease in there. Next up, Remember that grease seal that I threw away? Got a brand new one here. I'm just, I'm just gonna put just a tiny bit of grease on the outside of it so it has something to, cause that's a pretty tight fit guys. And I'm gonna set it there. I've learned this from everybody else, not myself. I don't know any better. I've got a wood block here. I'm using this, setting it on there. And then gonna hit it with a hammer. And I'm doing it on these mats, which is the worst place possible because they're bouncing and giving. But you see, I'm getting that on there flat. Feel it with your finger. Make sure you're not up above. Maybe a tiny bit right there. So this is what everybody else taught me. If I tried to use the hammer and just go around that, I'd probably end up tearing it up. See, it's in there nice and good. Put a little more grease on that bearing from here. Cleaning this out, getting rid of that grease. Remember the brake pad. The magnet's gonna grab here. The brake pad's gonna ride on this rim, basically. These a little different than your car brakes. All right, now we got that piece on. We're putting this hub back on. Slide it right over. Next up. We gotta pack the grease on this guy. You guys have to forgive me. I'm down to one battery on my GoPro and it got too hot. It is blazing out here today and I have to finish this job and move on. So switched over to my iPhone. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully this works. All right, so I got this bearing greased. Both sides look good. Again, it's like a cone. We're putting it in so the flat side is out. There we go. Now it's sitting in there. Of course, my leg's probably in the way. I'm gonna pump just a little bit more grease in there. Again, it sure would be nice if I had that little section where my spindle, where I could squirt it in and it would go to the back, but I don't. Next, if you don't remember, was the washer. There's grease on that side. That's why I'm not greasing the washer itself because it's gonna be sur surrounded in grease. Just put a little bit on the outside of it now, of course. So, I, I got a ton of grease in, oh, you know what, I'm gonna pull this back. Pull this guy out for a moment, put that back. I'm just gonna pump as much grease in there as I feel like I can right now. It's true, I just pumped it in a couple spots. But I'm going to spin that. All right. I'm, it's getting messier and messier, isn't it? I'm getting tired. I'm getting busy. I'm like ready to go. It is starting to show. But we're getting there. Okay. There's that. That's on. There we go. It's just hard to push it back there. I pushed too much grease in. It kind of filled the void. All right, tons of grease going on. Don't need any more. Last, well, next piece, castle nut. This gets hand tightened. 
it does not get torqued down in fact if you tighten it as much as you can with your bare hands and you can't find where that cotter pin slides back in you actually loosen until you find that hole for the cotter pin get a new cotter pin there it is found it all right slid that through all right i have a brand new dust cover i could put this on after putting the wheel on but either one doesn't matter all right as you see that got that on pretty good and flush we are done with all that that's spinning pretty good that's good to see now we're just gonna get our wheel on can be i'm gonna finish this up you know i don't think you need to see me put a tire back on we're done for me if you're watching this the guy that's never done this project before it's a grind it's a weekend project for me i don't know if it will be for you or not but it's doable if you want to know how everything turns out come back to my next video because as i talk about i've been having electrical issues so this is how i replace the brake assembly it's been replaced it all looks smooth it's all spinning smoothly i'm confident it's going to work we're going to find out in the next video like comment and subscribe